For the announcement video for this course, I did one of my favorite reactions, a thermite reaction with iron and aluminum, presenting it as an example of a highly exothermic reaction. And in one of the first lectures, we looked at just how exothermic it is and why the temperature increases enough to melt iron. Now I'd like to do another of my favorite reactions that's also exothermic. Indeed, just about as exothermic on a per mole basis as the thermite reaction. Transformations belonging to the general class of thermite reactions all involve the transfer of oxygen from a less reactive metal to a more reactive one, with the driving force being formation of the more stable oxide. Iron and aluminum are the most commonly illustrated partners for such a process, but other possibilities abound. In this case, we're going to observe the reaction of elemental magnesium metal with carbon dioxide. While carbon is not a metal, the same process of transferring oxygen from a less oxophilic species to a more oxophilic species will take place in this reaction. From the known heats of formation, we can determine that magnesium metal should react with gaseous carbon dioxide to make magnesium oxide and solid carbon, that is, graphite, with the liberation of 812 kilojoules per mole. In practice, the reaction is a bit more dramatic if instead of gaseous carbon dioxide, we use solid carbon dioxide, that is, dry ice. So, we have here a slab of dry ice. In this lower block of dry ice, we've chiseled out a small hollow, and we're going to fill that hollow with some shavings of magnesium metal. In a moment, I'm going to light those shavings with this torch, at which point they'll begin to burn in the air. To begin with, they'll actually react with oxygen in the air, as that too is an exothermic reaction, and the oxygen is readily available. However, we're then going to cover the burning magnesium with another slab of dry ice. And once all the oxygen is consumed, the magnesium is going to begin burning the dry ice in a fashion that is reasonably dramatic. Shall we give it a try? I'm now lighting the magnesium turnings. And they're off. Wow, did you see that? Once the dry ice began to serve as the oxygen source, it lit up brilliantly, and the heat caused some wonderful sublimation and condensation of water vapor in the air. Let's also take a look at the residue here in our remaining hollow. Do you see the black sooty powder? That's elemental carbon mixed with the more gray-white magnesium oxide. Besides being a pretty example of an interesting exothermic reaction, this demonstration should also have shown you why you do not want to use a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher to put out a magnesium fire, because it won't. Indeed, burning magnesium will also strip oxygen from both water, which we could call hydrogen oxide, and sand, which we could call silicon oxide. So, are you wondering what's the best approach for putting out a magnesium fire? Pretty much backing up and waiting may be your best strategy.